It wasn't a lot of fun dealing with Mother Teresa. But can you imagine you were dealing with Jesus Christ? Why wasn't it fun dealing with Mother Teresa? Because she was, uh, she was directed by an inner vision and inner sight, which I didn't have. So I'm trying to, you know, as representing the Archdiocese, get her to do things reasonably, understandably. Uh, you know, we got an archdiocese here. It's a complicated piece of equipment. And uh, uh, in fact, Cardinal O'Connor, who loved Mother Teresa, got hurt because he would set something up for her and she wouldn't use it. You know, uh, he, he really got hurt by her. I don't think she realized that she had hurt him either. You know, J.J. was an admiral and he was into doing things in a somewhat grand manner. And uh, not, not with notoriety, but with spit and polish. And priests of the diocese here who were uh, appointed to invest, you know, to hear the witnesses. And I went into the criticisms of Mother Teresa. Probably the most telling criticism, which would be from some former members of the Missionaries of Charity, was that she did not take care of their physical health. You know, and remember, she's an, a lady from another world, another time, and a sister would come in and say, Mother, my back has been killing me for three weeks. She's sister. Give it to Jesus. Well, sometimes there was something seriously wrong. I could tell you as a psychologist that most people who have low back syndrome do have a psychosomatic uh, problem, you see. But sometimes these people had something physically wrong with them. And um, at least they told me they did. And they were very angry and bitter. And I think what it was, was a clash of cultures. Now, she and I disagreed on things. For instance, you'd get this phone call. Father, could you please give the sisters a conference on patience or something? When, sister? Tomorrow. Sister, tomorrow. All right, well, I got a very busy day, but maybe I can fit two hours in some place. Where is it going to be? Thinking it was going to be in the Bronx, Washington, D.C. You know, so stop the play, you know. Uh, there was a clash of cultures. I, I don't like to sit around licking my wounds. And sometimes they were wounds. I mean, I, I can understand people being mad at Mother Teresa, but she always did things because she thought it was the will of God. Was she always right? I doubt it. Nobody's always right. You know, the last person who was always right, they, they crucified him. So they, we don't like people that are always right. That's what I tell you. I mean, can you imagine if you had to deal with Jesus? You say, Jesus, could I, could I make a suggestion? There's no place in the gospel where Jesus says to the apostles, Hey, fellas, what do you think? Should we go to Damascus? Should we go down to Jerusalem? He said, we're going to Jerusalem, period. You, you get a feeling that you're standing in a canoe next to the Queen Mary as it's steaming in to the, under the Verrazano Bridge. You're outclassed all the time, all the time. And that may be very good for us. I know what Mother Teresa, I was always outclassed. Always. I was playing tiddlywinks and she was playing ice hockey. I always used to tell people, oh, Mother Teresa is going to be in New York next week. It'll only take me six weeks to recover. Because inevitably, she dropped a dime on you. Uh, inevitably, whatever was going on, you left with some little thought, which 
was not complimentary to you. I think she is the prophetess of our times. I do think that. Why would you say that? Well, I think that uh, uh, I think she was directed, substantially directed, by the Holy Spirit, and to lead the church uh, to an identification with the poor Christ uh, and with a, uh, a love for the poor and with a true sincerity, uh, not a lot of theological chit-chat. 